Hi everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar, What is Limiting Your Factory's Performance? My name is Abby Dean, and I'm the editor of Advantage Business Media's Manufacturing.net, and I'll be moderating today's event. Before we get started, I'd first like to thank our sponsor, Parsec, who made this event possible. I'd also like to thank our wonderful speakers and, of course, our audience for joining us today for this educational webinar. Now, quickly before I introduce today's speakers, I want to encourage everyone in attendance to take full advantage of the interactive nature of this webinar platform. Please feel free to submit questions at any time during the presentation by simply typing your question into the corresponding box on your screen. We will be saving all questions for our speakers until the end of the presentation and we'll do our very best to answer them in the time we have left. Okay, business aside, let's meet today's speakers. First, I'd like to introduce Corey Vodbarka, the Director of Manufacturing Solutions at Parsec. Corey is a certified Six Sigma Master Black Belt who has led and facilitated global rollouts of lean manufacturing in Six Sigma at multiple Fortune 500 companies. Corey, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Our second speaker today is Greg Newman. Greg is a 20-year veteran of enterprise software and manufacturing. At Parsec, he is the Vice President of Marketing, and he helps ensure that Parsec builds software solutions designed to meet the most critical needs of its customers. Thanks so much, G2, for being here today, Greg. It's great to have you. Thank you. Okay, and our last speaker today is Christopher Gray. He's an application engineer at Parsec and an expert at using Traxxas as a solution software. He also assists in training, implementing, and offering support and minor development. Welcome, Chris. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Okay, guys, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Greg, take it away. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Today, we're here to talk about the topic, what's limiting your factory's performance? It's a big question. Obviously, uh, there may be a number of factors and, and uh, the answer to that question. Uh, what we have found in our 30 years here at Parsec in helping companies uh, solve manufacturing performance problems is that there are a few patterns, there are a few things uh, that we'd like to talk about with you today that you can do perhaps uh, to take some action at your factory. So uh, let's take a look at the agenda so you understand what we're going to go through. Uh, first, we're going to start by identifying productivity losses and what that means so you get a, a handle on the issue, the problem. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about something that we think is very important to us here, and that's Going beyond OEE measurement, a lot of us have heard about OEE. We understand uh, a little bit about it, perhaps, uh, but it's important to understand that's not the whole story, and we're going to share with you a little bit more about that today and what that means. And then we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Traxxas, the software that we have here, and how it can be used to maximize performance in your factory. Like I said, we've been doing this a long time. I'm going to deliver a brief commercial message. Bear with me. I am the Vice President of Marketing. I can't help myself. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Parsec so you understand who's behind this uh, presentation today. We have uh, factories around the world using our software, and thousands of factories, as a matter of fact, in over 100 countries. We're very proud of that. Uh, we're very strong in uh, a number of different industries, so we've really seen just about any kind of manufacturing challenge you can imagine, and we've helped customers uh, solve those challenges with good uh, manufacturing management philosophies and software to back it up. Let's take a look at one example real quick. Uh, Bush Brothers, Bush, uh, Bush's Best, uh, uses Traxxas for real-time operations management. Uh, they've seen some significant performance improvements as a result. We're very proud of the efforts uh, there. You can see some of the numbers here up on screen, an 85% increase in efficiency. Uh, they were able to calculate their ROI. It was very interesting to us to learn that for every one point in OEE improvement that they make in their factories, uh, they see a $395,000 annual savings. Uh, that's the kind of numbers we like to hear about, and we recommend that uh, anybody who's contemplating making these kinds of investments and making changes uh, should perform a similar calculation. It's good to know what your ROI is, right? Uh, Let's dive into it. Let me give a, a brief overview of what we're talking about before I introduce Corey, who can take us deeper into some of the concepts here with his expertise. 
We're talking about some simple questions. The answers to these questions can be difficult to come by unless you have the proper methodology. Uh, the questions we have up on the screen here, you can read some of them. Um, what kind of availability related losses can we identify? Um, let us look at bottlenecks. Uh, can we perhaps find tools to help motivate our operators? Because after all, while we're in the software business here in, at Parsec, we do recognize that it takes a combination of factors to be successful. It's not as though software is going to come in and solve all of your problems. You need to make sure, and Corey's going to talk about this, that you have people and process in addition to supporting uh, technologies. So as you begin to look at, at improving your performance, there are a number of things to ask yourself. And uh, what I'd like to do to take this conversation further is I'd like to hand it off to Corey Vodvarka and, and have him dive in and talk about some of those concepts. Thanks, Greg, and thanks for everybody on the phone for joining us today. Over the coming months, we'll be sharing a series of webinars where we dive deeper into how to improve your manufacturing operations performance and further leverage Traxxas as a tool in your journey to world-class performance. Today, we're going to talk about OEE and how to go beyond the measurement to improve the operation. Overall equipment effectiveness is a comprehensive manufacturing performance metric comprised of availability of your equipment, performance, and the rate of quality. This can be broken down even more discreetly into the six major losses. These losses include equipment breakdowns, setup and adjustment, which are components of availability, idling and minor stoppages, and speed loss, which are components of performance, and process defects and startup rejects, which are components of quality. When these losses are compounded, the effects can be quite dramatic to the overall effectiveness of a manufacturing process and greatly reduce the profitability of any organization. So when we deploy the solution, it's important to gain visibility into your operations, build knowledge in the workforce to make improvements, and implement controls to sustain gains. Having deployed OEE in several plants and industries, it's not unusual to find companies beginning to, beginning to measure OEE starting out well below 50%. That's even worse with the worse these same companies are often investing significantly in new capital equipment to again perform at less than half of its capability. Over 85% is considered world-class OEE and greater than 92% in continuous, in continuous operations that don't have product changeovers. Different industries may also have their own benchmarks that require even greater performance to remain competitive. So do you know what your current OEE is? Do you know where you stand? When managing a manufacturing operation, it's critical to expose the six major losses with systems that accurately capture OEE and provide real-time analysis. Then use that data to deploy improvements that address the root causes if you're going to remain competitive in a global market. So let's start by taking a look at how Traxxas captures and reports OEE. I'm going to hand things over to Christopher Gray to do a little walkthrough of how Traxxas performs OEE measurements. All right. So what you guys are looking at now is an example of a screen built inside of Traxxas. What you see is a web-based environment with one of our operator-facing screens. This is a screen that is intended to, for an operator to view to present them with information relevant to their current production, as well as to allow them and to promote interaction with that information to ensure the proper and accurate recording of, of the information for future reporting uses. On this screen, there's a lot of different information being presented. I'm going to break it down into different sections for you. First, on the left-hand side, you can see information relevant to the current operation. You can see the job, its current name, the product, as well as other information about its planned starts and durations. Sorry. Sorry about that. 
On the left-hand side, you'll be able to see uh, information relating to that current job, things about the name as well as the current shift and the range of it. Below it, you can see the manual events. These manual events represent events that cannot be captured by PLCs, allowing operators to also trigger events that can be tracked through the system. In the center, you see visual representations of the data that is currently being collected. Information like breakdown paredos of the various definitions and categories of the events to help with 5 y type analysis. Information relating to the current progress run. You can see the current progress of how far you've gone along your production as well as estimated completion times. Visual representations of the entire production state, how your operation has been running from the start to the current time, as well as visual KPI dials that allow you to know at a quick glance how you're performing compared to your baseline as well as your target values. On the right hand side, you also have the ability to interact with information and provide additional feedback in the form of tasks, which are operator-based uh, operator forms asking for simple inputs in a structured environment, as well as journals, which allow you to communicate between operators and other personnel, such as other operators in future shifts, supervisors, or maintenance operators. To go a little bit more in detail, these, uh, these different sections and interactions have a lot of pre-built screens that allow you to adjust the information based upon your settings. For example, if I wanted to go into a specific event and ensure that they were acknowledged and represented correctly, I can use this acknowledgement tile in the center. An operator would be able to see a list of all events that need to be acknowledged and interacted with, select from those specific events, and then change the information about them based upon their permissions. On a screen like this, I have the ability to change the actual cause, so the PLC or error code that was presented, if it was incorrectly categorized, the ability to change the reason code, so why it actually occurred, the cause for it, such as the jam at the end feed, or even more specifically, an operator type error, to provide notes for that specific event, and the ability to split the event as necessary. All this information gets recorded and automatically updated within Traxxas and allows you to report against it and ensure that your information is accurate at any given time. On the right hand side, the tasking information, uh, clicking on any of these tasks will present you with a task based form. These forms are also pre built and very easy to use. Selecting this task, you can see it provides me with a form full of inputs, things like checkboxes to assure I completed tasks, and basic, uh, basic numerical or string inputs like net weights or usernames and notes. All these fields include basic validation and the ability to provide additional information as necessary. This helps to ensure operators complete tasks on a timely basis and allows for the prompting of additional actions, such as having notifications occur when a task is not completed on time, or having any type of uh, events or any notifications sent out if the task is marked as failed. In addition to this information, once it has been recorded, you have the ability to view it and report against it in a number of different ways. Included in Traxxas are some basic screens that have reporting mechanisms. For example, this job selection screen allows me to see the information for any of the jobs that are completed for that line. I can view it in three different formats either by the events, by the KPI intervals, so my production counts, or a full overview of all the data for it. When I select overview, you can see I have full information about the job itself, full KPI information, and event information. And from here, I can drill down into these as many times as I would like. For example, selecting the OEE to see the OEE by hour. And I can also drill down from here and view the information either by the selected hour, by selecting individual points, or by even going and drilling down into the individual event types that consisted of that OEE. Another way this can be useful is by exporting the information to outside systems or presenting in other formats. For example, and my last example for this section, this is an example of an OEE summary. This screen shows you all the most important information from that job report, but in a simple to use screen that can be presented to a supervisor type uh, personnel. It gives you full breakdowns of the OEE for the current job, previous jobs, performance log entries, hourly, inf or hourly OEE information, as well as task states throughout the system. Thanks, Chris. As you can see, OEE is a comprehensive met metric for understanding and improving performance. As I mentioned, it's critical to expose the six major losses 
with systems that accurately capture OEE. By connecting directly to machinery, we can have accurate start and end times of stoppages and understand the difficult things to measure like minor stoppages and speed loss that are difficult to do with manual systems. Without being a job in itself, the process of measuring OEE should provide actual analysis that can, be in, that can enable organizations to quickly deploy improvements that address the root causes if you're going to remain competitive in the global market. Tracking OEE can help formulate the direction and priority to make improvements. However, OEE measurement alone is not the solution. It's time to go beyond the OEE measurement. So in today's webinar, we're going to talk about some of the ways to make improvements to the availability portion of OEE, and just a few of the many features in Traxxas that can help. If there's people on the line that don't have Traxxas, hang in there. We'll share some knowledge that can be helpful in improving your operations as well. Let's start with equipment breakdowns. I'm sure everyone listening today has experienced an equipment breakdown. This topic alone, I've taught several different week-long courses covering specific tools and techniques to address breakdowns, but today we're just going to start with a few. Chris is showing us uh, what's called a mean time between failure chart. Many organizations deploy preventive maintenance programs to minimize breakdowns. In doing so, they often start start out scheduling PM tasks at an arbitrary frequency, typically monthly. Or they may look to equipment manuals to outline the tasks and frequencies these tasks need to take place. While this may appear to be a good starting point, the maintenance department may, act, may accept these methods as good practices or later come to the realization that that wasn't really truly effective and again, make arbitrary adjustments. A more calculated approach to determining equipment's breakdown frequency is mean time between failure. Mean time be between failure is the time between failures or breakdowns of a system during operation. While tracking OEE, Traxxas collects the data to provide a mean time between failure analysis for your line, subsystem, and even details at the component level, similar to the report showing. Utilizing this type of analysis allows you to predict the failure frequency of the various components tracked on the line and take action to perform preventive maintenance tasks that will reduce and potentially eliminate unplanned downtime on the line. The actions associated with the PM will be specific to your individual situation. However, the mean time between failure analysis allows you to improve the PM effectiveness by developing the proper tasks needed to address the specific breakdowns you experience and build these tasks into your PM and properly modify the frequency to avoid unplanned breakdowns. We're going to hop over into the maintenance section of Traxxas. Scheduling PM activities can be handled in a CMMS system. However, there are some limitations on how traditional CMMS systems work. Most systems schedule PM on time intervals like daily, weekly, and monthly. But what if operation adds shifts or adds additional days? Do you have a feedback mechanism to increase the PM frequency to adjust for the additional runtime? If not, you may be, begin experience even more breakdowns. Because Traxxas monitors when your equipment is running, it can supplement your existing CMMS or take the lead. Traxxas can be configured to monitor and schedule the PM dynamically based on actual running time of machinery cycles. Much like your car notifies you of the need to service as it hits the required mileage interval. PM tasks can be configured within Traxxas to outline the work and provide detailed instructions and visual aids needed by maintenance mechanics to complete work. Traxxas also has the ability to capture communications from mechanics and operations which include additional actions to be completed. These PMs can be automatically scheduled or manually added to the calendar tool built in Traxxas. These can supply a visual of the workload of the maintenance department, which is useful for staffing 
and ultimately attaining a higher on-time completion rate for your PMs. More thoroughly and timely, PM greatly, greatly boost machine availability. Traxxas also has the ability to do predictive maintenance. You can see from the Traxxas interface, we're able to track things like temperature and vibration sensors to collect trends and automatically send notifications that conditions have become more severe and require attention. These are both proven techniques for identifying equipment problems before catastrophic failures. This not only reduces loss capacity, but significantly reduces the cost of repair. In these more advanced predictive maintenance techniques are of interest, I'll be happy to go deeper into their application in future webinars. You can also configure other statist statistical trends that you might find useful for predicting eminent equipment failures specific to your operation. Even with advanced tools for reducing the technical aspects of equipment breakdowns, an equipment failure is bound to happen. So it's also important to improve the organizational side of your maintenance department. Mean time to repair is a metric that measures the elapsed time a piece of equipment is a non-operational state and requires repair. This takes into account both the time to respond to the request for the repair and the actual time conducting the repair, which is often referred to as wrench time. Accurately measuring can be very, very challenging and resource intensive. I've seen major corporations spend hundreds of thousand dollars on consultants to conduct a, a single week-long analysis on wrench time. This type of tracking can be done continuously and yet effortlessly utilizing Traxxas. This provides the information to utilize many of the lean tools moving personnel, tools, and equipment repair parts to the point of use as well as utilizing mobile alerts provided in Traxxas to accelerate the transactional repair request process, resulting in quicker responsiveness and reduced time to repair. Analysis by SHIP may provide insight for modifying staffing plans to improve performance. So let's take a look at how this works within Traxxas. We have the ability when, uh, when downtime happens, an operator can actually make a request to the maintenance department, set the request level or priority of the repair, and provide additional notes or issues for the maintenance department. What that does is begins to count the time before response of the maintenance department. When maintenance arrives, they would click arrive on the work screen assign the job, and add any additional notes, allowing us to capture the arrival time of the maintenance department. That then kicks off what's called wrench time, the time that it takes to actually complete the work. So once work is completed, we can actually choose uh, we can actually make additional notes as to why, uh, what was done to repair, and then complete the job, thus capturing, again, the response time and the wrench time associated with, uh, with the repair. Another area that can greatly affect OEE is quality. In the most severe case of not monitoring and managing process quality real time, entire production runs can be rejected resulting in an OEE of zero, or even worse, escape to a customer. Traxxas has the capabilities to manage the completion of quality. Going back to this initial screen, there's many ways that quality is incorporated into this. 
On the bottom first, you can see that there is a KPI dial representing the quality of the current run. It makes it very easy and visual to understand how the, what your current status is. In addition, many tasks can be associated with quality as well. For example, selecting the quality control task will allow me to do a basic check based upon the quality aspects of my product. These tasks, whether pass or fail, can be immediately be sent as or for verification to a quality control department based upon how they have selected their options. In addition, you can have tasks that represent specific quality control or quality sampling. One example is an hourly HACCP check. If I select this one here, you can also randomly sample and do attribute testing based upon a number of different criteria, with similar results of passing or failing being escalated as necessary. You can also do continuous type uh, or variable type sampling as well. An hourly fill weight check will present me with a similar interface, this time prompting me for sample sizes that can be recorded and analyzed against. Once this information is captured, it can be presented on other screens, such as this SBC screen. What this screen shows is a representation of the last 30 samples for any given product and can be filtered by additional criteria such as previous jobs or by previous specific runs. You can see immediate calculations on the left hand side showing you your current indexes based upon the last 30 values as well as chart representations of those values as well. You'll be able to see some of these points are marked in red. These red points represent any points that have violations and are also visible on the right hand side of the chart. Selecting any of these points with a violation will also tell you more information about it. It will allow you to see the specifics about them or the specific metrics related to that group, the actual sample values, as well as the violation that occurred. This information is all processed in real time, allowing you to get the most out of your SPC, ensuring that no, pa no point passes without you having knowledge about it and its status. Once you've completed capturing this information, it can be presented in many ways whether you wish it to be in this real-time screen that allows more interactions, whether you want it to be in a historical type view where you can slice the information as necessary for your own viewing, or if you want to use a full quality supervisor type screen similar to the OEE one you saw before. This type of screen will allow you to see all the important information gathered on a single interface showing you quality logs, quality information for previous jobs, as well as the recent SVC information. Today we covered just a small piece of Traxxas capabilities. As you can see, Traxxas is loaded with standard OE functionality out of the box, as well as features that will help effectively help you advance forward in OE. Over the last 30 years, Parsec has served many of the top companies in the world. It's allowed us to leverage both our internal knowledge and the knowledge of many of these great companies to develop tools to take our customers to the next level. Over the years, Traxxas has evolved from what began as an OEE measurement tool to a performance management tool, as well an MES development platform in which creativity is the only limitation. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate the walkthrough. There's certainly a lot to consider when you're looking at how to improve your factory's performance. And uh, while we just touched on a little bit of it today, we hope we're able to give people a good sense of what's involved and uh, give you some direction as to how to get started or how to extend your current initiative. I know that we have uh, perhaps some questions, and uh, we may want to take a few minutes and answer questions from our audience. Yep, thanks guys so much for that great presentation. Um, there was really a lot of insight. We got to see the platform in action. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Um, thanks again to our sponsor, Parsec. Uh, before going on to our q and A, I I do want to quickly remind the audience that you still have time to submit questions. Um, just type them into the corresponding box on your screen and we will do our best to answer them in the time we have left. Okay. So as you guys all mentioned, the three of you, we, you covered a lot today. So I kind of want to just break this down a little bit. Um, so of course, to any manufacturer listening in, um, the first question they're going to have is cost. Um, so I'm wondering, Greg or Corey, perhaps you could touch on what does the typical OEE management 
um, system cost? Well, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Um, we we do see that the cost is certainly coming down in uh, in recent years, thanks to um, lots of technologies. Uh, not only, of course, have we revamped Traxxas and we re uh, uh, redeployed it as a 100% web-based platform and a modular platform um, that allows us to move significantly more quickly and avoid custom development, so that brings the cost way down. You also have, of course, uh, complementary technologies that are becoming more widespread, like uh, IoT. Inter you know, the Internet of Things is really becoming accepted. We're excited to see that. We have a number of customers who are using IoT devices. Uh, in addition to or instead of PLCs in their um, factories. So these factors uh, that I just mentioned all play a role in bringing the cost down. Um, it's fair to say that we really should, uh, to be responsible, we really should take a look at, at an environment and understand the complexity. Uh, how many lines are you running? Uh, how many sensors would you like to draw data from? Do you have a uh, um, uh, desire to have manual data collection be a part of your uh, your solution? So there are a number of factors. Uh, and we have worked with customers on solutions that have ranged uh, all in, uh, anywhere from uh, the tens of thousands, low tens of thousands, up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars of very ambitious uh, projects. I'd like to get back to the ROI discussion I made at the beginning and mention uh, that when you take a look at what it is you're looking to achieve and the amount of money that's in play, uh, I think you'll find that OEE is one of the most compelling um, solutions you can deploy from an ROI perspective, it really does tend, in our experience, tend to pay for itself very, very quickly. So I hope that uh, broad direction is helpful to our audience. I know we have a number of other questions um, that are about some technical issues, and uh, uh, Corey's looking at those now. Thank you, everyone, for submitting these questions. These are terrific. Um, maybe we can have Corey uh, answer a few of the technical ones since he's our expert and he's right here uh, today. By the way, I'll, let me make a note to everyone who's listening. If we don't get to your question online, we are going to take these questions offline and answer them and provide complete answers back to the audience in written form uh, in the coming days. So hopefully that will be very useful to everyone. If we don't get to your question, please know we will get to it uh, offline. Very good. Um, we have, if you don't mind, I see that we have some questions. Corey's scrolling through our list. There's quite a few. Uh, talking about uh, compliance, I see, and talking about um, maintenance and talking about SPC charts. Very good. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hit upon a few of these. Um, one question on the board is, what about medical instrument compliance? Um, we, do, uh, we do a lot in the pharma space. It's probably our our uh, our biggest industry that we do touch because of the uh, regulatory nature of com uh, of compliance associated with the pharma uh, medical devices as well as uh, you know food and beverage. Those are probably the areas we touch the most. We have several clients that um, require validated systems and are regulated under FDA. So we do comply with 21 CFR Part 11. We have several implementations that are validated systems out there. And uh, happy to talk about that in further detail um, following, the, following the webinar, if you'd like. Uh, we can get into some very specific ways that we, uh, we contribute to that 21 CFR compliance. And kind of going into some of the other questions I'm seeing, like you guys said, there's quite a few. Um, I'm looking at question 18. It comes from Thomas. And it says, how do you build a robust change management process outside the software tool to solve the problems tracked? Um, he also adds, and I believe someone else said this in the beginning of the presentation, the software can do a great job tracking, but it by itself cannot solve the problems. So I don't know, Corey, if maybe you would like to handle the first part of that question. How do you go about building a robust change management process outside the software tool to solve the problems tracked? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and you know we could we could probably talk for hours about that. But uh, some of the things that I like to I like to implement when working with clients is closing the loop on the data. So 
uh, when the data tells you something, again, your your operators are key in, in solving the problems. Uh, your operators, your maintenance teams, your quality teams, the, the people have to do the work to, to leverage the data. So we, we hit upon it slightly. The, uh, the system has the ability to generate tasks um, to, to force some of that activity. So for example, uh, like day by the hour boards are typically used in lean where you look at hourly intervals and your ability to hit targets. So Traxxas can do much the same and, and take it even further. By, by looking at the data hour by hour and, and did you hit your, your goals, if you didn't for that hour, Traxxas can force the operator to uh, notate a corrective action and that can then be uh, sent to a manager or a supervisor. It can be reviewed to make sure that it's relevant and uh, have a good understanding if, if it'll actually solve the problem. If it doesn't, the operator, uh, the operator might need some additional coaching on how to do root cause analysis and corrective action. So that would be brought to the attention of the manager very quickly through what Chris showed, like the manager report for OEE. Those things come to light very quickly. That manager might get involved with assigning additional resources or doing some additional coaching on the line. If everything looks good and uh, the corrective action looks appropriate, life might go on and, and uh, you know, we watch the next hour as it returns to a, a acceptable state. So there are some things in Traxxas to, you know, force the operator to begin working down that path of corrective action and, again, um, you know, getting management involved. So that, that would be one point. Um, the ability to have management reports and uh, identifying exceptions of what's going on in the factory where those managers need to get involved, having that at your fingertips and not having to hunt through data, that is also a very helpful point to be more responsive to what the data is telling you. So a couple points, um, certainly happy to talk about specific uh, issues that might be happening in the factory. There's there's different things we see from a cultural standpoint that um, we address with Traxxas. So. Right, every factory is different and every plant floor is different and unique to the customer. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of going deeper into some of these more technical questions we're getting in. Um, so Corey or Chris, feel free to chime in or answer. Um, this one comes from Stan. Do you provide the technology to apply sensors to the machinery that you're collecting the information from for the Traxxas platform? Yeah, so the answer to that, we, uh, Greg mentioned we have several implementations, thousands of implementations all around the world in over 100 countries. So the way we do that is through our partner network. We have, uh, we have partners all around the world that are system integrators and help with that hardware piece. Um, within Parsec, we typically don't uh, sell hardware and things of that sort. That's where we'll get a partner involved to help with understanding what's required from a hardware standpoint, a networking standpoint, and integration standpoint to do that. So we can certainly help in that regard uh, to uh, applying sensors to the specific machinery and understanding what signals might exist and what else needs to be added. So uh, happy to help with that. And this is, this is a question kind of for anyone on the Parsec team who cares to answer, but is there a minimum or a maximum manufacturing operation that um, Traxxas can handle? It's a, it's a fair question. Uh, we certainly do implementations of all sizes. Um, you know, MES, uh, manufacturing execution systems, operations management software like ours. It started life in, in some of the largest factories in the world, no surprise, and uh, it has slowly migrated down and is now uh, being implemented in factories um, of all types. And, uh, and our approach, and the reason we revamped uh, Traxxas and came out with Traxxas 10 the way we did it last year was so that we can, in fact, um, offer solutions to factories 
uh, of any size. These are the, the way we deploy now is uh, an order of magnitude more affordable, uh, you know, easier and faster because we went to this 100% web-based and uh, modular platform. Uh, we see that's the way the industry is going. We think it's very important. You know, we have a mantra around here. We have a, a saying. It starts with our CEO, and it's uh, we like to see if we can make things as simple as possible. It's not always easy to do that. Manufacturing is complex. We all know that. And it's not about making things simple. You, you can't always make things simple, but you can make them as simple as possible. Uh, and so that is, that is what guides us as we build this stuff. And what we have seen over the years is that uh, our software has gotten more powerful. It's also gotten more affordable. Great. Thank you. Um, Corey, I think you might be able to answer this next one best. Does this software interface with other ERP systems like SAP? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we interface with all the major ERPs and even minor ERPs. Uh, we can pull data from pretty much any kind of database system that's out there. So not just ERP, uh, we run into maintenance systems, quality systems, uh, all kinds of third-party databases. We can extract information from pretty much anything that's out there. In terms of ERP specifically, um, it's, it's very important to do this so you can route things like schedules down to the line, have that ability to modify, uh, modify schedules down on a line basis, uh, have that visualization of the line as well. It, it creates the basis for being able to do analysis of OEE by product and lot number and things of that sort. So very important thing, and yes, we, we can tie into really all of the major ERP systems out there. Perfect, thank you. And when responding to a request, um, is there another? Is there a certain type of device you can or cannot use? For example, a PC or a cell phone. Yeah. So I, I think the question is regarding like notifications and things like that. Um, just in in general, um, the system is built on HTML5, which means it's. Uh, can be used on any browser type, and it's responsive to any kind of device size. The entire system is, is completely web-based from configuration to uh, the, the user experience um, of interfaces and things of that sort. So PCs can be used, cell phones, tablets. Um, the world has, uh, has, has become unleashed and uh, most, most of our clients require the ability to be able to move around their factories with their data, um, and this is presenting things like tablets being used to perform checks and paper-based paper forms going to electronic for uh, real-time analysis and more advanced analysis. So the web-based uh, theme is, is very important to a lot of things that customers are looking for right now. Yes, absolutely. Um, moving on, because we have a lot of questions. Our next one is from Nicole. She asks, can, can Traxxas integrate into measurement devices like scales to automatically log measurements so an operator doesn't need to manually enter? Yes, they can. Uh, Chris kind of went through an example of some manual entries for SPC. So we can accommodate both. Um, we have the ability to interface into uh, inline scales, offline scales, any type of measurement devices. We can uh, we can do that, and that lessens the likelihood of entry errors and the ability to do more sampling, more statistical uh, uh, data. But if that capability doesn't exist, if, uh, if the devices don't have any kind of communication to them, maybe older devices, that can be supplemented by creating screens and forms where the operators can manually enter. So yes, we can, we can deal with the uh, automatic data upload as well as supplementing with, with manual. Great. And, um one of the other questions I'm seeing, too, is what type of support and analysis does Parsec provide um, 
after installation occurs. Um, so I don't know if Corey wants to take that one as well, perhaps Greg. It's an interesting question. I think the um, what I'm what I'm reading in that question is uh, what kind of an ongoing relationship might a customer have with Parsec or, as Corey mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, with one of our partners. A number of our partners do offer service level agreements uh, in addition to our support and maintenance agreements uh, that we offer here through Parsec. Uh, our, our our partners do work with a number of customers to offer service level agreements that ensure. Uh, that they are um, being given the, the level of attention that they require. Um, what we have found, this is, this is a little bit of marketing. I, again, I'm the VP of marketing. I can't help myself. Um, Traxxas is pretty darn easy to use these days, and uh, we don't find that we get uh, a whole lot of support calls. Uh, when we do, we're, um, we're happy to field them. And uh, In fact, we use Traxxas to track some of our stuff here. We can show you the... The meantime, we can show you our, our own response times here. We're pretty quick on it. Um, but the uh, the interesting thing about it is that um, with the uh, with the interface, the way we've designed it, and and the straightforward nature of it, um, the level of support required has really really come down. As well, just part of the sales process, many of the uh, many of the individuals in business development here within Parsec, we have manufacturing experience, several years of manufacturing manufacturing experience, working, running factories, and uh, very relevant to helping coach some of these accounts to, uh, you know, best leverage the tool. And, uh, you know, that, that pretty much is ongoing with many of the accounts that we handle. Right. And I think that's one of the questions that I see pop up more often than not when talking about these sorts of things because so many smaller to mid-sized manufacturers might be overwhelmed um, by either starting this process or thinking about, you know, when am I going to see my ROI? So I think it's a good question to ask, and I'm glad you guys addressed it. Um, yeah, and, moving on. To, I, yeah. Maybe I can expand a little bit further. You know, within our partner network, uh, you know, Greg <laughs> mentioned if, if a client needs technical expertise, we have we have partners that are system integrators. We have uh, we have partners that have the ability to supply additional training and coaching in regards to lean and things of that sort. So um, we can we can definitely either internally handle coaching and uh, in helping out clients as well as partnering up with the right people uh, within the industry that will help them uh, move forward with the with the tool. Perfect. Thank you so much for clarifying, Corey. Um, and ne the next question we have from another viewer is, do you sell your product by module or is it an all-in-one? Fair question. We do sell it by module, let's call it. We, uh, we have a platform. This is an important distinction, and I want to walk you through it very quickly. We have a unified platform. And the reason that's important is that, as we all know, those of us that have worked in manufacturing, uh, the number of systems and subsystems inside of a plant can, can just get nuts. It's um, dozens and sometimes even hundreds. And one of the things that we felt after many years of doing this with, with customers, very important to us, was to, to make sure that we reduce the complexity. And the, and the easiest way to do that is to put all of the core functionality of Traxxas into a common platform that when you deploy it, it, is, uh, it sits there, it resides on the server at your uh, location with all of the necessary components already built in so that when you turn on a particular bit of functionality like an OEE measurement solution or SPC, which you can turn on as you need, uh, the, the uh, platform is already in place and therefore you don't have to install new software you don't have to worry about compatibility issues because, of course, everything has been designed to work together on that common platform. So it's very important, uh, we felt, to give our customers the kind of flexibility that our design and our architecture does. And uh, we've gotten a very positive response as a result. Um, it's very easy to work with the tool to get started very quickly, uh, get some ROI uh, with, a, with a project that might be OEE. In fact, about two-thirds of our customers do start with OEE, interestingly enough. Uh, probably because it is just a terrific place to start. You really can um, see some measurable improvements 
very quickly starting there. And then once you've um, seen some, uh, some success, you can move on and, and very quickly deploy other aspects of our, of our platform. Right, it's a good starting point. Um, moving on to another question we have, can you also do SPC charts based on live data extracted from check layers versus just from user sample input? Yeah, I think we, we kind of covered that previously. We can certainly connect to uh, um, any kind of devices. We present that information in a, a live, real-time fashion. Um, things of not just the data, but any kind of violations of the data. Uh, what's nice about that, when violations happen, you can kick off tasks that require corrective action, just like similar to like I was mentioning with OEE, to really close the loop on, on uh, you know, taking action on problems. So, um, yeah, both connection to the devices, as long as it has some type of data output, like a RS-232 or an Ethernet connection, um, we can tap into those things or uh, supplement that with manual data collection. Great, thank you. Um, another question we just got in, will the system be installed on the site server or is it cloud-based? That's a good question. We, we do see increasingly customers are asking for cloud-based systems. Uh, there are a number of technical considerations when it comes to deploying a solution like this in the cloud. Uh, the ability to um, gather and report on real-time data, obviously, is what drives the conversation mostly. Uh, and what we say here at Parsec is we're all about choices. So we do, in fact, currently work with customers on uh, private cloud servers. Uh, we also have several deployments on uh, Amazon Web Services and on Microsoft Azure. Uh, the vast majority of our customers still do, in fact, deploy uh, on the servers at their uh, own locations. Let me add, uh, very briefly, we have, in Traxxas 10, we have a multi-site architecture that is actually built into the system. So we are 100% prepared for the future, and we have several companies, uh, customers of ours, now using our multi-site architecture. It really streamlines the approach. You get a chance to, um, to administer things from one location and gather data from multiple locations. So uh, pretty cool stuff. It's really exciting. It's an exciting time to be in manufacturing software because of all these changes. Uh, and uh, we are trying to be mindful of the fact that not everybody's going to change at the same pace. And so we make sure that we have choices. And we only have time for one more question, so I'll make it this one um, since you brought up choices. Um, this final question says, we measure OEE differently than what you showed. Can I create a custom OEE report based on our formulas? The, the short answer is yes, but let's expand on that. <laughs> to go slightly more in detail on that, in terms of the OEE information, we track all of it and we provide all that information in the wonderful table that's a view. Uh, you have a lot of the very basic blocks of any type of OEE type calculation you could ever want to do provided through that table. So it, as long as you're not using anything ridiculously unique, we can support it fairly easily, and even if you are, it'd be as simple as creating one additional column to that view to, to maintain whatever you're trying to build. So yes, we, we can handle pretty much any OE calculation you can throw at us and display them however you'd like. This happens very often. Um, many companies have their specific ways, so uh, those calculations can be created. We can show them the traditional OEE as well as any kind of modified have the ability to supply multiple OEE calculations or, or other type of metric definitions uh, beyond OE. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much. We went through a lot of questions. Um, I think we went through most of them. I'm sure I think I just saw some more come in, but the guys over at Parsec will be sure to get to you offline after this webinar ends. Um, and yeah, I guess that's now. So we're going to wrap up today's webinar, What is Limiting Your Factory's Performance? Thank you so much to everyone for those great questions, and of course to Corey, Chris, and Greg for their insightful answers. As a reminder, if you'd like to take another look at this webinar or share it with a colleague, it will be available for on-demand viewing at manufacturing.net, industrial distribution, manufacturing business technology, or food manufacturing starting tomorrow.
This concludes today's presentation. Thank you so much to everyone in attendance for tuning in. Thanks to our excellent speakers for their time and expertise. And of course, a thank you to, again, Parsec for sponsoring this event. Um, thanks, guys. Everyone have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.